In this system, we've got a 20 kilo block on a frictionless surface attached to both a spring and a damper. We're told that the initial perturbation is 0.2 meters with no initial velocity. And we're asked to find out how many half cycles it will take for the amplitude of the oscillation to peak at half the original displacement or less. So if we draw what this might look like, we have a system starting at x naught that's oscillating and the peaks are reducing and eventually we'll get a peak that occurs below x naught divided by 2. And we want to find the number of those that peak if this is 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. So our first question is to check that the system is actually underdamped. The condition for underdamping is that c squared is less than 4mk. So we can put in 35 newtons seconds per meter all squared. Has to be less than 4 times 20 kilograms times 700 newtons per meter. And we do find that we have 1225 on one side, which is much less than 56,000 on the other side, so the system is underdamped. So next we'll draw our free body diagram. We have our block that has moved a distance x to the right, and we note that x, x dot, and x double dot have to be assigned in the same direction, so they'll all be positive to the right. This block has a weight, and there's a normal reaction with the ground. Those don't really come into our equation of motion. And then we have two forces here, the force of the damper and the force of the spring. Now I've drawn those forces positive in the direction of positive x, and that just helps me make sure that I have everything in the right directions when I'm creating this equation of motion. But what I'll do is I'll assign them as negative. So Fs equals minus Kx, and Fc is minus C x dot. So we can write our equation of motion, sum of forces in x. We'll have Fc plus Fs equals Max, which equals m x double dot. If we plug in those forces, we get minus c x dot minus k x equals m x double dot. And we're going to rearrange that so we have m x double dot plus c x dot plus k x equals zero. All of these coefficients here have to be positive. So that's really important. If you don't have them all having the same sign at this point, then there's something that's gone wrong in the setup of your free body diagram. And we can put them into a standard form that's dividing by m. We get x double dot plus c over m x dot plus k over m x equals zero. When there's no coefficient in front of the x double dot, whatever is in front of the x dot is 2 omega n zeta, and whatever is in front of the x is omega n squared. And so we can write that omega n equals the square root of k over m, and that's going to equal 5.92 rads per second. We can find that zeta equals c over 2m omega n. We're going to get a value of 0 0.148 for that one. There are no units to zeta because zeta is a ratio. And then we can find omega d, the damped natural frequency. 
that's going to be 1 minus zeta squared times omega n. And we get a value of 5.85 rads per second for that one. So the damp natural frequency is always a little bit less than the natural frequency. And that means the period of a damped motion will be less than uh, the period of the same system without damping. So our undamped system will have a solution of the form x of t equals c1 sine omega dt plus c2 cos omega dt all times e to the minus omega n zeta t. So our damp, this is how our damp system is going to move. This gives us the position at any point in time. And we know that these coefficients C1 equals V0 plus omega N zeta X0 divided by omega D and C2 equals X0. We're told in the problem that there's no initial velocity. So we can simplify that a little bit. So now we know everything about the system, its physical parameters, and how it's going to move. Now we want to consider the peaks because we've been asked to find a peak that's less than half the initial displacement. So if we look up here, the distance between two peaks is going to be tau over 2. So we can write tau over 2 is pi over omega d, the damp natural frequency. Or we can write that the time for each peak is going to be n pi over omega d where n equals 1, 2, 3, etc. integers. That is that because we have no velocity here, v0 equals 0, at time equals 0 is, the f is a peak. So every pi after that we have a peak. So now we have the solution that describes how our system moves, what its position is at any point, and we know the points that we want to target, the Tn values. So we're going to put those together. We can say that x at Tn is going to be equal to omega n zeta x naught over omega d times sine omega d times n pi over omega d plus x naught cos omega d times n pi over omega d all times e to the minus omega n zeta n pi over omega d. Our omega d's cancel here and we'll note that sine of n pi equals 0 and cos at n pi is always going to be equal to plus or minus 1. So we can write our equation again. We've got x of tn equals 0 plus x naught, we'll say it's 1, e to the minus omega n zeta n pi over omega d. Now we want to find the magnitude of x t n when that is less than or equal to x naught over 2. So when the magnitude of our peak is less than half our original displacement. We'll plug in our expression for x t n. That's going to be x naught e to the minus omega n zeta n pi 
over omega d. That has to be less than or equal to x naught over 2. Our x naughts cancel. And we can take the ln of both sides. So we end up with minus omega n zeta n pi over omega d is less than or equal to the magnitude of ln of 1 half. And we want to solve for n. So we end up with the magnitude of negative n is less than or equal to the magnitude of omega d over omega n zeta pi times ln of 1 half. Magnitude of negative n is less than 5.85 rads per second over 5.92 rads per second times 0 0.148 times 3.14 all times a minus 0 0.693. That's our ln of 1 half. And we get that minus n less than negative 1.474. We take the minus side from both sides and we get that n has to be greater than or equal to 1.474. Because our n's have to be integers, then the first n that is below the magnitude of x naught over 2 is going to be n of 2. So the first n, where the peak has a magnitude that is less than x naught over 2, is the second half cycle. So let's draw that out. It means this is, if this is x naught, and this is x naught over 2, here we have negative x naught over 2, and x naught. We start here, we're going to dip down to the first peak, and then up to the second peak. There's peak 1, there's peak 2, and there it's below our x naught over 2. Thanks for watching this video. Find more videos and material at Mechanics Map.